Yep. Can you mute me? Sorry. Oh, there you go. All right. Hey there. I'm on a long drive, so I'm calling in. <laughs> you're such a good, you're such a good girl. You're driving though, and I worry about you. If you have an accident, it's going to be our fault. <laughs> I'm good. Try not to let that happen, okay? Nope. I I'm going to watch the road. I'm just going to listen. All right. Can you do it blindfolded? <laughs> <laughs> where, are you, where are you going, Nicole? We all live vicariously through your traveling. That's right. Oh, I'm I'm going to the metropolis of Toledo, Ohio. Woohoo! <laughs> Hopefully, you'll be staying in the house the entire time you're there. Yeah, I'm visiting my sister and my mom. So, this idea of masking in 90 degree heat is not pleasant at all. <laughs> Just saying. Nope. You feel like you're yep. smothering. Well, especially with 200% humidity. That just makes it worse. It's, I think uh, someone wrote this morning, it feels like you've got a pillow stuffed over your face. Well, you feel like you're being waterboarded. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> with your own bad slide. Sweat. <laughs> so how's everyone enjoying prison? <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer prison to standing around in 90 degree heat with a mask on. Actually, um, <clears throat> say prison, but the prison of my beautiful air conditioned home, let's put it that way. <laughs> That's right. We have Sherry Aubrey here for the first time. Hey, Sherry. Hey, how are you guys doing? Welcome. I'm great, thanks. And Cindy Farrell, too. I don't know that you have you joined us before, Cindy? She's muted. Hey. No, I haven't. This is the first one. That's what I thought. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to Crazy City and Ryan Heron. Your first time too, right? Hey, Ryan. Oh, first time. Did I get an award? A prize? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ryan. <laughs> Hello. Ryan, you get a lovely Monte Carlo background for your for your Zoom. <laughs> And look That's at Sam. Sam, where are you? The Hermitage Museum? Where are you? The Hermitage? Uh, With those red walls? I'm in the, I'm in the palace. I see. <laughs> I, I've got a, a Grace Kelly theme going on. Plus a puppy. <laughs> Grace Kelly plus a puppy. Yeah. I love it. Puppy and a bow tie. I'm doing a body part. He likes uh, earrings. I've got the sash, the of the Saint, the Saint, Order of St. Charles Sash, which he also likes. <laughs> That's awesome. I might not have anything left at the end. <laughs> you guys are such a joy, honestly. Uh, Whitney, I don't see Kelly. Um, is she Kelly here? Um, Kelly is not on yet. Okay, let, let me text let's, her. Uh, make sure. If you'll send her this link, just make sure she has the right one. And uh, I just, I'll go ahead and welcome everybody. Uh, we've got a great presentation today. Um, I am so excited about these properties. Um, and thanks again for switching the time to one o'clock. You know, we're right in the middle of your day and uh, we just appreciate your participation and taking the time to, to go on this fun trip with us. Uh, welcome to all the new people who are here today. Um, and uh, we hope that you'll join us again. Just a little bit of a protocol thing. If you are not speaking, we ask that you mute yourself um, just because we're recording and it makes everything go a lot smoother. And um, that's about it. Uh, Carol, do you wanna do the introduction here? Sure. Um, well, since my early days on the incentive side of the business, uh, the destination of Monte Carlo has been, uh, first of all, on a bucket list. And then once I uh, had a chance to visit and take some groups there was, I felt one of the most magical places on earth, one of my favorite destinations and a place that, you know, I feel really inspires a lot of daydreaming, a lot of princess fantasies, a lot of James Bond behavior. I don't know. It's just a classic. So... I was absolutely delighted to have Kathleen Williams, who is the director of the Societe de Bain de Mer, which is the uh, principality's collection of fine hotels and resorts. 
um, say yes to our invitation to host this week. And she lives in Europe, or is, is, I don't want to use the word as stuck in Europe, but she's in <laughs> Europe right now, um, can't get out. And um, she has been ably backed up in a delightful manner by her assistant and the person who's keeping the wheels run, running up in New York, and that's Stella Ortiz, Cruz Ortiz. Um, and I'd like to introduce the two of them. So who wants to go first? Hi, I'll go first. My name is Stella Cruz Ortiz. I'm originally from Puerto Rico. I am still quarantining in Brooklyn. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. And I am usually based with Stella in our New York office, living in New York City, but I've been in Europe since March 15th, everyone, and I am in Stockholm, Sweden, which you may know is one of the few countries that didn't have a lockdown. <laughs> awesome. So you're yeah. free as a bird, are you? Except that you can't leave. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, there's many restrictions in the way they're living, but I am part of their social experiment. <laughs> yes. Right. So ours work and you look healthy. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'll have um, Stella start um, our presentation when you're ready. Carol and Whitney, thank you so much for inviting us. You're All right. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, can everyone see it? Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, and we do have a third um, dedicated team member to the North American market. Her name is Leia. She is based in Monaco. So um, whenever it's safe to travel and you guys need to do a site inspection, she will be usually the one that greets you there. And she also helps us with availability and proposals, etc. cetera. Um, so as Carol said, our company name is Monte Carlo Societe de Vendemer. That translates to the Society of Sea Bathers. We are certainly not a household name, um, but we're lucky to be working in this lovely destination. Um, the company was founded in 1863, so we have been catering to this jet set crowd since the 19th century. Um, and we do currently have 50 venues and we op own and operate four lovely hotels with Kath which Kathleen will describe shortly. Uh, this picture right here is our Casino de Monte Carlo. Um, it's our iconic picture of what everyone thinks about um, when they think about Monaco. And we're very excited about it. We do have an update. It was completely redone and reopened in June. So we have a cool video from one of our partners. going when the trials that we meet steal our hope lift your eyes and you'll see life's just a journey Um, so, uh, Carol, you might remember the casino with a little bit more greenery, but now it's more walkable. Um, you can actually remove those, those palm trees and um, uh, have events here. Celine Dion was going to have a concert in the spring, no, early summer, excuse me. Um, unfortunately, it was canceled due to COVID, but this is just uh, one of the many ways that our destination keeps evolving and reinventing itself. Um, as you can see, you could see in the video, the green space is the Jardin de Boulogne-Bron, and you can still see the track. So the road is still intact for our very important Grand Prix that takes place every year. And you can still see the great fancy cars parked outside the Hotel de Paris. So people watchers can still sit at our Cafe de Paris and do some great um, people watching. Um, we do get the question a lot, so we've got this handy dandy map here. Monaco is indeed in the French Riviera. Our groups really like staying in Monte Carlo as a home base and doing some day trips in the region. So you could be taking a, a perfumery class in the Fragonard uh, factory in Ez one day and the next day visit the markets in San Remo and Ventimiglia in Italy. So it's very convenient. 
Um, if you can see the helicopter icon, that's just making, marking, excuse me, the Nice International Airport. We've got direct airlift from Delta and United and a boutique airline called La Compagnie. And we like mentioning it because you can charter their planes and they're all business class and they've got very competitive rates. Um, and then transfer to the destination from the airport is a 30 minute coach ride or our preferred method, a seven minute helicopter ride. And this is our resort map, the last map you guys will see, I promise. Um, it's just so you can see where each venue and hotel is in relation to each other. I don't know if you can see because of the, um, our speaker view, but in the right section is the seaside, left is the historic. Um, going from Hotel Hermitage to the Monte Carlo Beach is only about 20 minutes. And Monaco is very small for context. It's, it fits in Central Park, New York. So it's a very small destination, very walkable, and, but there's still lots you can do. And now I'll let Kathleen take it away. Thanks, Stella. Here we are at what I'm going to call the new Hotel de Paris or Hotel de Paris. It's just pronunciation preference. And I say new because the hotel was partially closed for four years. And that was for us to complete a renovation to the tune of 280 million euros. So more than a million euros per guest room was invested into this hotel. Many people saw it and said, why, why do you need to touch anything? And the point is we really pride ourselves on listening to what the luxury traveler wants today, preserving our past. We would not change this facade or the historic landmarks inside, but to continually respond to a discerning travel. So that meant making a courtyard, adding a wellness center, bringing in a fitness center, bringing in more light to the lobby, for those of you who remember it as the more mahogany and dark blues. And it takes a lot of cash to do that, so we're fortunate to be debt-free and to be able to invest. So this is the Hotel de Paris new inner courtyard, another spot that we can use for our groups. If you wondered what was there before, in 1863, they didn't have the technology to put heating and cooling underground. And so that was all hidden away. So it's really beautiful that they restored the property in this fashion. I love to tell more about the past as we look at the new pictures. In 1864, when this hotel opened its doors, it was the first hotel in the world to have a bathroom in every room. And that's what luxury was then, after traveling on a train. And in fact, the idea was whispered to the designer from his wife. Today, it's seeing views of the sea having an additional suite product, places that you could even use for entertaining guests. And again, all of these other features that you're looking at, boardrooms. I don't wanna show you a lot of meeting rooms today. I just want you to know that we have spaces for everything from a two person tate to tate up to 900 and everything in between. The Empire Room is where we are now. Um, the carpet was made in India to match the ceiling of gold leaf. This is where our prince hosts his events and where you can have one of your group events. You have the same chef preparing your meals, the same setup, the same table. So it looks like, um, I just lost you. Sam, you could be making your way down from the palace and this is where you would be having dinner this evening <laughs> and you're ready to go. And in fact, um, the prince is hosting a dinner tonight with a hundred guests, one of them a famous um, French chef. So Sam, we understand if you have to make your way down in your carriage. <laughs> Underneath the hotel is our company's wine cellar, which is two kilometers in length. That's because the topography of Monaco allows for a series of tunnels. We have 600,000 bottles of wine. We have a room where 50 people could have dinner, and we are the world's largest consumer of champagne. A nice little fun fact for us as a, a company. But as Carol um, helped us set the tone to get ready to jet set, Many people who've been to Monaco are on this call today, and for others, it's a new destination, but you have these images, and we have Hollywood to thank for that, because they use our country and our hotels often as a background. And here we are at the Bar American, and this is where a superstar, we would, a superhero, excuse me, had a drink with his mate, Pepper, who was played by Gwyneth Paltrow. Does anybody on the call today know what superhero that was? Anyone? Uh, the, um, oh. uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, who was he? The soup, the trainer. Oh, I think Iron Man. Iron Man. Yes. Iron Man. 
Iron Man. So who, I know Whitney, you said Robert Downey, which is correct, but so was Iron Man. Who was it that answered Iron Man? I have Christine Johnson that typed it in. Okay, great. So Stella, please record that because you two are going to get a bottle of rosé sent to you. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And um, as we leave the Bar American, we're going to um, go over to our spa. And the reason I want to show you this is it forms a really natural connection to our hotel Hermitage. So the two hotels are connected. But our spa is 70,000 square feet. We can give treatments to 45 people at the same time. It's a freestanding building. And I think what's most unique about this facility is this heated pool, the steam room, the Turkish sauna, the solarium. It is all complimentary for guests of the Hotel Hermitage and the Hotel de Paris. So you incur costs once you have a treatment and you're with a therapist, but this fitness center is complimentary. So that's a reverse model for what we see in a lot of US hotels that charge for that. And this ties into a history of wellness and well being. And I think that might serve us well in the future as we make it through COVID and health is such a hot topic for all of us. Um, connected now to the Hotel Hermitage, opened in 1901. It is an homage to the museum in Russia. Those were our original guests, the wealthy and the aristocrats from Northern Europe. Also restored 280 rooms in the Hermitage which is often a surprise to people. And so is the fact that we have allocated this historic landmark lobby for the groups. I'm really happy that we have a general manager that wants large groups. The ideal size is 150 rooms, 300 people, but we can go more. We have a satellite check-in, we have a satellite concierge. You could have your desk right here. And I think it sets us apart for often when you find that you're pushed down the hall or not um, in the ideal spots of a palace hotel, but we want to share our assets with you. A lot of this has to do with the love affair of American business. The fact that our reigning prince, um, his mother was American, as we know, Grace Kelly. And by the way, she did come over on the boat with a dog, just so you know. So it's very appropriate <laughs> that you have your, your dog in the picture. And if we hark back to the movies that we talked about, I'd love to know if anybody can tell me the name of the movie that Grace Kelly was filming when she met her prince. He invited her to the palace for tea. Catch a thief. That's it. So Carol, Yay! you're gonna get a bottle of rosé too. <laughs> Better than anything, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. In addition to um, that movie that many of us are familiar with, she also hosted a party every year in our Hotel Hermitage called the Scorpio Party. She had a November birthday. So did Picasso, so did um, Sinatra, and they would come, and you could only come to the party if you were also a Scorpio. A little fun fact at the, at the Hermitage. Probably the biggest surprise for people is the cost. We have entry rates starting as low as 285 euro, depending on your season, and we'll go up to, to double that, but we also will lock in US dollars. We'll build a package for you in US dollar rate. So what I really invite you to do as you look at these pictures and see that we continue to invest in our properties, that it may be more affordable than you're thinking. If I'm really very honest about it, people say, Kathleen, wow, you're sitting under Italy and Paris, but you are a little bit more than a Berlin or a Portugal. So we're somewhere in that sweet spot of Europe to help you guys with pricing. For people on the call that have been to Casino Square, which is what we're back to, you may not recognize this building off to the right, and that is the new one Monte Carlo. The only thing we were missing after reinvesting in our historic hotels was a modern conference facility. And so we built one and we're really excited to have it. And we're gonna take a few glances inside. It's hosting everything from fashion shows from Italy, furniture shows to maybe your awards dinner or your general session. So again, you have these historic hotels with all the modern elements that you need, translation booths, theater, and finally, a coffee shop where you can pop in and get a slice of pizza or a croissant or just a cappuccino, and dare I say, even wear jeans on Casino Square. So the time <laughs> has come. It has arrived. <laughs> this real mixture of the glamour and the more comfort. So Model One is also where you can find your conference service person on break. It's like our favorite staff place now. <laughs> Everyone's so happy to have it. You can see the company's made a lot of changes. Cafe de Paris just got a revamp. This is your classic French brasserie where you see everything from families to business people to hopefully your groups. And we will now privatize this 
um, restaurant and brasserie as it opens up to the new casino square that Stella started the presentation with. So you could see that pedestrian area. So it's a lot easier to plan your events. Um, we're back in the casino. What's different about our casino from Vegas, which is what most people know of, ours is also a museum. It was the first thing that we built as a company. So before our hotels came the casino and it has been used for a film franchise three times. You may think of somebody ordering a drink. You may think of someone dancing with his leading lady. Can anyone tell me who that character is? James Bond. Yes, it is James Bond. So you two are gonna get a rosé sent to you. <laughs> um, and fun fact for those of you who are James Bond fans, the 20th movie in the series is coming out this November. Um, in theaters or drive-ins or maybe via Netflix. I know that's yet to be determined, but they're hoping to release it and the European premiere will be inside our casino and at our hotel, the dinner after. The Buddha bar can be privatized for your groups. It's the classic fun um, dinner evening that turns into a club atmosphere. And our chef just won from a contest in Japan, best sushi chef in the world. And he's also available for sushi classes if you want to um, offer that to your group. So that's often a surprise to people that they would have a sushi experience on the French Riviera. Another surprise is our Monte Carlo Beach Hotel. This beautiful gem is 40 rooms. It's tucked away down on the seaside and it's available for privatization. So as we all grapple with these ideas of how will we social distance or how will my group feel safe, I want to offer this up as a place where you could take it over. So you could set the standard of how you want things to run and you could still have access to all of our other venues that we look in Monte Carlo. It feels very much like you're on a boat because every room is facing the sea where it laps up for you. And if you see the individual art on the wall, it's because instead of hiring or buying art, we engage local artists to come and paint for us. That's to celebrate the history of the Riviera from Matisse to Picasso, and people really appreciate them. Another special feature of this hotel is the Olympic size swimming pool and the fact that you could have 700 for dinner. A lot of people aren't aware of this. So imagine you're back in the formal ballroom like I'm in right now, my background, the Belle Epoque, but you could also have a casual night. If it looks like Miami, my friends on the call, it's because Miami looks like us. This opened in 1927, which was the essence of the Art Deco period in France. So if you're into theme parties as well, you're going right along with history, but we continue to move. So the flappers are no longer there. We have yoga students instead, but we love it when people want to celebrate that part of the Monte Carlo beach. A really special feature as you look at the restaurants here is our chef. So we have the world's only organic Michelin star chef. And he really challenged us by saying organic doesn't have to mean boring. And his catering extends for the groups, all the restaurants at the hotel. Everything is sourced locally and made by the chef. Um, he only imports two products, which is chocolate and coffee. Everything else is sourced um, with our staff. And it also services that's another one of the restaurants here at the beach, um, making sure you see the more casual side of Monte Carlo. It also services this villa. This is Villa La Vigie. It's available for a weekly rental. There's five bedrooms. It's a very special place to be. It was built by Coco Chanel, inhabited formerly by Carl Lagerfeld, and now we're able to sell it at our company. Um, a fun fact, Mr. Lagerfeld designed our housekeeping uniforms. <laughs> which is quite special. Um, I talked a lot about buyouts because of the world we're living in today with COVID. And we also have our largest hotel that allows it. And I'm gonna bring back Stella to tell you about the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel. So yes, this is our newest hotel. It was built in 2005 um, and it's kind of our great soft landing hotel for American groups or groups that are new to this region or to Monaco. Um, it's very different in feel and in style than our other hotels. You can see it's a little bit more modern and you can maybe find someone walking in their bikini in the lobby. So it's kind of more of a resort feel. All of the rooms have these great terraces overlooking 
um, the sea or the mountainside. 75% of the inventory is seaside rooms. So it's, it's, um, it's just a lovely, lovely hotel. Um, one of our favorite people that stay here is actually tennis player Rafa Nadal. When he comes for his tournaments, we actually have a suite dedicated to him. So um, you can maybe also see some celebs here. And of course, we've got meeting rooms, banqueting rooms, very, very great outdoor uh, venues as well. Um, even though it is a bigger hotel and more casual, we still maintain this luxury five service, um, five star service, excuse me. Um, the Blue Bay restaurant is which with, sorry, Marcel Ravon, and he is a Michelin star chef. He oversees all the F and B in their uh, hotel as well. Um, and you can see there's also this funky blue gin lounge and restaurant. Some groups will use it for their welcome drinks and it still has great views of the Mediterranean. Um, another great feature for this property is its indoor outdoor pool. It is in fact one of the best pools in Europe voted last year um, and its unique feature is that it's got it flows into a sandy bottom lagoon more um, water-based activities is these new cabanas and they also have direct sea access so it's just all in all very resort feel resort style and then um, the hotel is right next door to the sporting monte carlo this is um, i like to think of it as our entertainment um, venue you can do general sessions you can do concerts gala dinners in this um, complex. There's a meeting room. There's a famous Jimmy's Monte Carlo um, disco that a lot of DJs and famous um, celebrities frequent. And this room here is the Salle des Etoiles. The room is, the room is, the roof, sorry, is actually retractable and you can have fireworks for your events. Uh, the destination is very sustainable. So we do light fireworks now, which are amazing. Um, and the other and last bit of this uh, presentation is one of our newer restaurants, Coya Monte Carlo. It brings a little bit of diversity to the cuisine that's offered in the destination. It's Peruvian and Latin fusion. And you can see it's more eclectic in style, but still with that awesome Mediterranean view. Um, and this marks the end of our presentation. We hope it was informational. Thanks again for your flexibility and please ask us anything. Christine, I just saw your comment about the changes. And so I'm really grateful that you spotted it. They've definitely um, invested a lot of money and have intentionally wanted to bring back the relaxing seaside part or some people say hey it's not your grandfather's Monte Carlo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right ladies, uh, Josh would like to know can you talk about the price points from least to most according to your properties. Absolutely. Um, and where are you, Josh? Because I think you had a background up of the harbor, which I really appreciated. So thank you for that. I think I saw it. Um, it, does. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it looked really great. So the Hotel de Paris would be, I'm going to start at the top. So the hotel, that would be the most expensive and that would probably be the case year round. The Hotel Hermitage would set 10 to 15% under um, then the Bay Hotel and the beach is a seasonal property. So March, April would be September, October would be really attractive rates. And then July and August, I probably couldn't even really get group space at it because it's so loved by individual travelers. Um, a starting point in April, which would be a, a peak season at the Hotel Hermitage, is going to fall around 395, 425 euros. And that rate is including your breakfast for two and your vet. Does that answer your question, Josh? Yes. Good. Just give us the thumbs up. <laughs> okay, great. Kathleen, are there reciprocal uh, kind of things going on with your properties? If you, you know, have your group over here, can you do the events at a different one? How does that work? It's a great question, Whitney, and it's really connected to why Stella and I enjoy our job is all of what you saw today, plus all the additional venues that we didn't even touch on, we, we own 33 different venues in the destination, they're all reciprocal. So you pick the hotel that feels most like your group, 
that matches their style. And then you say, oh, we want the casual, like the Monte Carlo Bay. We've been a Caribbean and a Mexico client and people want their pool and their mojitos, but can we go up to the hotel to Paris and have a five-star gala night? And the answer is yes. You don't pay more for that privilege. You have a first option and we actually encourage you to do it. And to our great surprise, that's what we thought would be happening, um, that the more casual guests would want to go up to Casino Square. But actually, our typical clients who have the um, stay at the Hotel de Paris are often found down at the seaside. So it's working truly reciprocal. And everybody wants the mixture in their program, which has been great fun for us. But that was a surprise. We didn't anticipate it going in the opposite direction. And it has. Barry would like to know, how are you handling contingency contracts, RE COVID? Great question, Barry. And I'm glad we're going to talk about the reality of it. We miss guests so much. All of our hotels are open. We didn't talk about that. Um, but obviously, the American guests are not there right now and greatly missed. So for um, programs that were meant to operate this spring, I'm happy to say that 17 of the 18 of them were rebooked. One just decided not to travel on their own. And in future contracts, if somebody has business coming to operate by December of this year, we're giving them a 30 day cancellation, no penalty. For people who wanna book further out, we're working individually with what their comfort is. If it's delaying deposits, if it's having a, a cancellation or a rebooking is usually what we prefer. You know, Let's not charge you the penalties, but let's rebook so we can eventually have the program. But I've been happy with the flexibility and so have the clients. So that's how we're handling it right now. Okay, and you mentioned that you offer packages. What features do you typically package together? Yep, and we'll be able to send those out via you if you'd like. So our package is based on four nights, just so you can look at a price point. Um, the, the accommodation, the welcome party, including champagne, including an open bar. Um, a final night gala, which we assume is a three course seated gala with a reception beforehand, your staff office throughout um, and commissionable to you. And that's why else the package is attractive because you earn commission on more than the accommodation. It's not that we want you to buy a package and you have the same menus, the same access. It's not like, oh, you bought the package so you don't get these drinks or this room. It was because we were losing so much business to cruises or other destinations and somebody wanted to have one price point to say, if I add on my DMC and I have a flight, I'm at 5,000 per person or I'm at 8,000 per person if I want seven nights. And it helped us get in the game because you look at the way we've restored our properties and people think, oh, I can't afford it. And it was a really quick way to say, here's what a package costs. So some people buy it that way, others take it apart, but there's no tricks to our package. And it is in US dollars. That was another hurdle. And I heard that a lot. Oh, we just don't want to worry about the futures in the market. So that's another worry we can eliminate. And nowadays we have many more things to worry about, but that will continue. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen, do you have a favorite property? <laughs> I can answer that since nobody's on the line from Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do, and it's the Hotel Hermitage, and I think it's the romance of it. <laughs> Josh is like, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's the fact that I feel as if I'm in somebody's home, that each room has a different wallpaper or different furniture curated for it. It feels so very special to me. Um, so I love all of them, but the Hermitage is my favorite. Stella, what about you? I really, really love the beach. Just style-wise, it's it's beautiful, it's perfect, it's so chic, and it's still, you got everything you need there if you don't really want to leave that little corner of Monaco, and the pool is amazing, and yeah. Well, I, I was I was commenting to Carol in the um, in the little chat. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to see all those photos again. Like, it, it was just like this to me, it was just like this barrage of beauty and all, it, it looked like you were in different parts of the world. I mean, those four locations have such distinct vibes in each one that um, I hope that, you know, of course this presentation will live on our website for a while, but if people wanted, if our planners wanted to get a copy of your deck, could, would, 
would be able to send that to them? Yes. Okay. I can send the presentation fact sheets if you want specifics on each property as well as the US dollar packages. Yeah, that, that'd be nice because they, they're just so stunning. Um, another question, Josh wants to know, um, oh, Alexa's talking to me. Hang on one second. Alexa, <laughs> come on. You go to Monte Carlo, Alexa, stop it. Um, now, I was just saying, I was just saying there's a tunnel that connects from Lermitage to the spa, which is convenient. That's, that's really nice. Oh, Josh, thanks for the, um, the comment. And the tunnel now is reciprocal to the Hotel de Paris as well. So it is a marble corridor. And it's quite funny. Everybody's in it in their robes, right? Going back and forth. And it's acceptable. But that's so it's fair for me to say that forms one building. Those two hotels that are now only a block apart connected via our spa wellness center that, that we took a look at. And I, and I really do hope that people we'll use more of those facilities when we're able to be back in Monte Carlo. I mean, health is a hot topic these days, the way we eat, the way we take care of ourselves. And we've long had a focus on that. The, the French might be ahead of us on that. I, I, missed, I missed a flight one time at the Hermitage because you put those shades down and um, I didn't know they were down. And I woke up at like 1030 and I was, <laughs> but they had the blackout shades. <laughs> I mean, I think on that point, another way that I can speak freely, because I'm an American from St. Louis, Missouri, so I'm a Midwest girl that's been very fortunate to work for this French company, is I had to explain once at an annual company meeting, I was making a presentation like we're doing today, and I used the reference of a guilty pleasure. And all these hands went up, all these French hands, and they said, why do you feel guilt if you're experiencing pleasure? What is a guilty pleasure? <laughs> and it was such a cultural moment for me to understand that that concept doesn't exist. <laughs> and so I think when this time is over for all of us, it might be nice to go somewhere where there is no guilt about sitting outside in the sun, having a glass of champagne, eating the perfectly made pastry, having a spa treatment. They feel no guilt about such things. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> right? And this Midwest girl is like, well, the measure of your day is what time you get up and how productive you are. You know, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't translate, does it? it, does it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the, the um, you know, sitting and eating and drinking and things, you mentioned that uh, the ballroom, the, the food uh, catering and, and food service there was just stellar. Can you speak a little bit about your, you know, the meeting spaces and any kind of, you know, bonuses that go along with those that you can think of? I'd say the top bonus is in all the hotels, there's a chef with at least one Michelin star at the Hotel de Paris. He has three and they are not separate from the group banqueting. So they oversee the entire food concept. So if you're having a board meeting with lunch, it's going to be really excellent. Same with your breakfast meeting all the way up to your awards dinner. So that's one piece. The second would be how heavily staffed we are for food and beverage, that we're very happy to meet people's um, private menus, or we have a lot of experience. I think this sets us apart, Whitney, with global corporations. Monte Carlo is a place like a Switzerland. We're politically neutral. And we have long welcomed guests from around the world, regardless of race, religion, culture, creed. So if you say to us, we need an Asian menu, we need um, gluten-free, we need halal, we need, that's something we've been doing for a very long time. That is not a challenge for us. And that works really great for a lot of our tech companies that are bringing in people from all different countries. Same with rooms. You, with, sometimes people need a henna room, sometimes they need a prayer room. None of that is shocking or surprising, kosher. So that's probably what I'm most proud of with our food element is not just how beautifully it's presented, but, but that it is a global understanding of how people eat and allergies of today. And you know who else makes me think about our food is Ryan, because one of the things that is great about our Vista Mar restaurant at the Hermitage is the chef goes daily to um, Villefranche, which is just about 10 kilometers down the road, to meet with the local fisherman and pick out his fish. It looks like you're on the tour with him. <laughs> and when I said, hey, we could sell that, like 
people would love to go with a chef and have them meet local fishermen with their sweaters and their beards and pick out the fish. And he thought that was crazy, but indeed that's become a, another group tour. So our chefs are meeting with their suppliers. They know where the lemons came from. They know where the tomatoes came from. Nothing, things aren't coming in in boxes that were frozen. That's fantastic. Any, any other questions from anyone? Are, is everyone just blown away as I am? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, ladies, uh, yes, Carol's waving. Uh, she's muted though. Um, uh, I do have a question because you guys were, well, first of all, let me say, this was a super impressive presentation. Uh, Kathleen and Stella, you are great storytellers. I am blown away by the changes in, the, in Monte Carlo and some of the incredibly beautiful hotel spaces that I remember so fondly, but were more historic in nature. So I can't wait to come back. I know everyone in this chat box feels the same way. Um, could you address, because we do have a few minutes, what are the more popular specific tours and activities that people um, take their groups on when they're in the kingdom for, you know, four to seven days? Um, I want to say a lot of our main, act well, our, the main activity with our DNC partners is the vintage car rides. Um, they um, get vintage cars or actually some of them have um, contracts with Ferrari and the guests can drive them themselves. So that's a really big one because you can go you know, drive the Grand Prix route or go through the Three Corniche. So it's very, uh, a very special experience. Another one is, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, um, perfume classes at the Fragonard uh, factory in Ez. Um, what else uh, am I missing? I know I'm missing something, Kathleen. Well, I think you touched on the more special ones to our region. To, just to make sure we cover it, we do have a golf course. We do have the spa, we have what we do have the water sports, which may be more typical and expected, but I think the more special is what Stella said in going into the back country. So you can be in a car for an hour and be in lavender fields. You can go to grass where 90% of the world's perfume is made. And then um, Carol, you told me it's a drinking crowd. So um, there's <laughs> chateaus and vineyards and a oh, wine tasting is really exciting coming during a season where you can be part of the harvest is even more fun where you're stomping on the grapes and then what goes with wine, but meeting the bread makers and the cheese makers. So to get down at a granular level to where the food comes from, that's becoming increasingly popular. And it's the beauty of being on a farm during the day and then coming back and being in the hotel Hermitage at night. It's such a complimentary experience without you know, having to get on another plane or travel three or four hours. It's really close by. And as much as I don't wanna share um, you know, the experience or tell people to divide up, a lot of people do divide and come stay three nights with us and stay three nights deep, deep in Provence. That's a very common trip to sell with other hotels that are in the region. So it's only fair for me to tell you that as an idea. A lot of people choose to do that and others stay put with us and radiate out every day. Fantastic. All right. We are nearing the, the close of things and um, we want to announce the first five on the call because they'll re be receiving a special gift today. Carol, you want to announce the first five? Yes. I apologize. My Zoom, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. My Zoom somehow kicked me over to please update and I don't see you any longer. Um, but our first five before 1255 or after 1255 are going to receive something lovely from Stella's swag closet. Stella, tell us what you have for these five people, please. We have got very lovely Hotel Hermitage logo keychains, and the logo was designed by Carl Lagerfeld. Really wonderful. And those are going to Cindy Farrell, Josh Brown, and Bud Falowski. Carol Hammond and Ryan Heron. So thank you guys for that. Second thing is, and I was unable to get anyone's attention, so I'm just gonna make an executive uh, decision here. Christine Johnson, she answered correctly to two of the trivia questions. 
Um, and so she, I guess by right, should have two bottles of rosé coming, but let's give the second one to Leah Catherine Seaton, who also answered correctly on the Iron Man question. So Catherine, uh, Stella, how would you like to go about getting those addresses? Do you want us to send them to you? Um, so please write it on the chat box or feel free to email me. However, you like I'm typing in my email now. And then, so it would be Sam, because Sam got the last question, Sam Bixby. Um, and I, I, Leah Catherine and Christine, correct? Leah, yeah, Leah Catherine Seaton and Christine Johnson. Perfect. And Carol. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a, in a white box. I cannot see anybody. I can't see the chat <laughs> box, though. I can hear y'all. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> A, a brand new COVID experience for you now. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> we can still uh, you, Carol. But um, all right, and then the the grand prize today, Kelly McAllister with Maui Jim is here. And I think some, of you, I, some of you need to start, uh, you know, to describe to Kelly what you're thinking in terms of your get-ups today. Some of you may need to do that. She was a little late in joining us. I'll go. I'm channeling my Grace Kelly and have oops, an active puppy at my feet. Sorry. <laughs> um, have the Order of St. Charles sash that she would wear and the tiara. And I'm sitting in one of the rooms at the Prince's Palace. <laughs> Sam, you look like you were made for that job too. <laughs> oops, and my dog is, in a, is dressed in a bow tie as well. He's been very actively listening. He's so cute. <laughs> hey, he stayed with you. <laughs> oh, he's crazy right now. Josh Brown, what do you have going on? Oh, I just have a French chapeau on, but I think I think uh, the princess there needs to win with the sash. She's she's the best. I know she's definitely got it going on. And who are you channeling today with your gorgeous fur? Just someone in Monaco driving around with my furs. <laughs> Can't believe the taxi drivers down in Monaco also wear fur coats. <laughs> now, I will tell you something about taxi drivers and policemen in Monaco. They have to be over six foot two and they have to have a certain um, body weight and facial bone structure. Many people say they all look like models. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> They do. That's hilarious. And, then you, <laughs> and you definitely want to be arrested in Monaco because our company caters to the jail. And every <laughs> and every explain out. And, yeah, and every cell has a sea view. So not not recommended, but you do you do what you gotta do. <laughs> a definitely we all want your job when we grow up. Uh, right? You got the greatest <laughs> products to sell. Josh, thank you for that. I do love them very much. <laughs> thank you, ladies. That was a gorgeous tour. Sam absolutely took it away. So Sam, congratulations. I'll send you an email with how to go shopping and redeem for your Maui gym sunglasses. Thank you. We don't make any for dogs yet. No doggles, but next time. <laughs> doggles. <laughs> Her serene highness, Sam Bixby. <laughs> right. <laughs> A LinkedIn title for you, Sam. Hey, Kathleen, do you call your other colleague Princess Leia? <laughs> oh, we should, actually. Oh, and she's new to joining our market, and what a time, right, for everybody? I mean, it's really nice to see you all smiling. I, I don't know what to say, but that it's just been such an interesting time for all of us. Thanks for all these great questions. Thanks, Thanks for, for the amazing there. tour. Thank you for answering all this. And um, Carol, do you want to tell everyone about next week? Uh, I do indeed. Um, our special guest is Janet Wilbur. Janet is responsible for sales and marketing of the two exquisite Belmond hotels in the Caribbean, uh, La Semana on the island of St. Martin and Cap Jaluca on the island of Anguilla truly the most exquisite beach destinations that I know of in the Caribbean. She says she is not coming as Cleopatra. She is not coming as the local mango concessionaire. She is only coming as Janet, but that's 
really delightful company. <laughs> so once again, we invite you to get your chicest beach attire organized. Uh, bring yourself a, a frozen drink and join us at four. We'll back, be back to 4 p.m. next Wednesday for an experience with the Belmont properties in the Caribbean. So thanks, everybody. I wish I could see you, but I can't. But you guys brought your A-games again, and we really appreciate it. Uh, please send me selfies, especially Josh and Sam and Ryan. Uh, also, as a reminder, and we will keep the chat box open for a minute, please, Cindy, Josh, Ann, Carol Hammond, and Ryan, put your mailing address in the chat box so Stella can grab those so she can get your keychain. You can get your keychains, okay? Actually, uh, I think they need to email Stella their, email Stella. Um, All right. their mailing addresses. Fabulous. That works? Yeah, and email she put them. Okay. Yeah, and that email address is in the chat box. Gotcha. I'll type it again just in case. Stella at sbmnewyork.com, sbmnewyork.com. Once again, Kathleen, thank you so much for broadcasting in from, uh, is it Sweden? Is that where you live? Mm -hmm. Stockholm, that's true. From Stockholm, that is uh, just very exciting in and of itself. And Stella, <laughs> thank you so much for holding down the Ford in New York and being such a great partner. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. This was really, really great. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. All right, Whitney, if you'll keep the Zoom uh, function open and everyone else, go and have a great day. All right. Thank you all. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Okay.